Welcome back to the Racing Dudes YouTube channel where today I will be previewing the Grade 2 Franklin Stakes this Sunday, October 15th at Keeneland. Last year this race was a Grade 3, so we are moving up in the world a little bit. We have nine girls going five and a half furlongs on the turf. To start off with the number one, we have Caravelle for Brad Cox. We all should be familiar with her by now with her record of 15 out of 24 starts, and she's won last year's Reader Cup turf sprint against the boys. She also won the Franklin last year that got her into the Breeders' Cup and they are looking to be on the same path again this year. She took some time off after the fall and came back and went on a three race winning spree with all of her buyers over or close to 100. Her last race, however, was one of her worst ones that she's had in almost a year. She got bumped. She just couldn't catch up. But if you look at her race last year before the Franklin, it's the same exact thing happened where she finished in fourth place. She has the speed and she's going to want to be on the lead. Uh, the number two is Wakanaka for Bill Mott. I used to really love this horse. I always pulled for her. And then she kind of just broke my heart over the last year. Um, her last win was in the ungraded stakes at Keeneland last fall. Since then, she's kind of been placing some G1, some G2s and just came up short. She stayed pretty consistent with her buyers, though, so I ne don't necessarily think that she's slowing down. I just think that she's at her peak, and her peak isn't as good as some of these other horses in here. She just needs a slow pace to close into, and with Caravelle, I just don't really see that happening. The number three is Trained Artemis for Kelly Breen. The last time this horse won was in the Ungraded Stakes at Monmouth. I don't think she has a chance. She's never won a greatest stakes and the competition is just too good for this one. The number four is Twilight Gleaming. She is a four-year-old filly for Wesley Ward. She was in the Franklin last year where she finished fourth and then he sent her to the Ascot where she didn't fare too well, came back to Del Mar and finished seventh out of nine horses and she's been off for a few months now. Her last workout was pretty decent at Keeneland last week, and it doesn't hurt that she's five for 10 lifetime at this distance. She's going to want the lead, though, and I just don't think she's going to get it. The number five horse is Bay Storm, who is your second favorite in this race. She's had back-to-back -back wins in the upper 80s, lower 90s. Um, she is only six for 17 lifetime, um, but if you look at her finishes, she's always tends to show up and hit the board. She has more of a stalking pace, so I can see her trying to sneak behind some of these speedy horses to the inside, but I'm just not sure if she's going to be quick enough. Um, she did finish behind Caravelle this summer at Churchill, where she finished second by a length and a half, so she can compete, uh, but her last two wins, she hadn't won since August at Monmouth, so... Then number six is Linguistic, who has been losing in optional claimers, so... Thank you. Next. Right, Ariana. The number seven is star guest for Applebee. And something weird just happened like last week. I, Harper was sitting next to me about 20 minutes ago. She listened to Coco Melon and Miss Appleberry. Appleberry came on. So if any of you parents know that song, I think I'm just going crazy. Or maybe it's a sign that this Applebee horse can pull it off. But on a serious note, she is the baby of the group. She's only three years old. She's only raced seven times. She's won three of them placed in three of them and got third in one of them. So she's been in the money every single time. Now she has been in class three and class four races in Europe, but you can't deny that she has some talent. And when Appleby comes over here, you got to pay attention. Minus last week. Uh, the number eight is Tony Ann. We most recently saw her at Kentucky Downs where she finished third behind two of these other horses in here. She's only raced nine times in her lifetime, but she has won four of them. Her highest buyer is a 91, and that was an ungraded stakes race. She's going to want to stalk. I just think she's out of her league. The last horse is BG Warrior. They've tried her on the dirt. They've tried her on the turf. They tried her on synthetic and only pulled three wins out of 17. But one plus that I do want to say is that she won on the turf at Kentucky Downs, and that is nothing to be – that's no easy feat. That's good for her. She had a career high of an 88 buyer. She was on Lasix, but maybe she is the dark horse of this race. Um, we could throw her into an exotic. It's almost midnight here in Kentucky. Maybe I'm losing my mind. But with all of that said, I'm going to go with none other than the number one Caravelle. I know she's the chalk, but I think she's just head and shoulders above this crew. 
So let's try to make some money underneath, okay? Underneath, I hate to do this, but let's put Wakanaka, we're gonna trust her one more time and put her in a $20 straight exacta. In a trifecta, we have to add in the Applebee horse. And if that Coco Melon song screws me and she wins, I'm gonna be pissed. But also, let's throw in the number nine for fun. Hey, anything could happen. So that's gonna be a one, two, seven, nine trifecta box. But thanks for tuning into the Racing Dudes YouTube channel. Make sure you like, you are subscribed to this channel so you don't miss anything video content related. And until next week, guys, good luck. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track. It's Breeders' Cup season, and we've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the World Championships. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash Racing Dudes right now. Click the notification bell. You never want to miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.